Hello everybody, welcome to this week's F1 to 1. Um, as we are, believe it or not, more than a fifth of the way through the 2014 F1 season, I thought this week I would canvas your opinions and your questions by asking you on Facebook and Twitter. As always, you lot are very impressive, you've delivered in your droves, so here we go. Lots of questions and lots of honest answers from me. Lots of questions about Sebastian Vettel, by the way. Um, on Twitter, at WoodyWGC asks, if Seb doesn't manage to outshine Daniel Ricciardo, how will the credibility of his four blown diffuser titles be damaged? And my answer to that is not in the slightest. I think there's no question the Red Bull was the best car of the last four seasons and Mark Webber is an incredibly talented Formula 1 driver. But how many titles did he manage to win? As an F1 driver, you can only race against the cars that are on track. You can only drive in the car that you've got. And Sebastian Vettel did a better job than anybody out there. You know, when was the last time a driver had a rubbish car and won a world title? I don't remember it, and I'm sure you don't either. You know, Fernando Alonso dragged his Ferrari close. Perhaps the McLarens could have done better with a decent car at times in the last couple of years. But overall, Sebastian Vettel was the best driver in the best car. And please, just because uh, Daniel is outshining him at the moment, don't think that that doesn't mean that he deserves all the credit for his four world championships. Otherwise, does Michael Schumacher not deserve credit for having the best Ferrari and winning all those world titles? Because... When he was at Mercedes, Nico pushed him close. So are we saying Nico Rosberg is better than Michael Schumacher? That's the danger. And also related to Sebastian on Facebook, uh, Anthony Baldwin. How do you think Seb is feeling right now after dominating last season and easily being one of the best drivers in a super quick car to being asked to move out of the way for his new teammate? Um, I've been exchanging messages with Daniel Ricciardo uh, the last couple of weeks and I can tell you that boy is super happy. In fact, let me just get up one of the messages that he sent me a couple of days ago. Um, quite simply, he just said, thanks, mate. I said, well done. He said, thanks, mate. Great times. Hope you're well. Um, and I think that's the point for Daniel. These are great times for him. He is flying. He's had massively bad luck so far, but has outraced and outqualified and outbeaten Sebastian Vettel time after time. Um, and I think it's not a reflection of the fact that Sebastian isn't as good as we think he was or, yeah, I think I've just about got that right. I think it's more a reflection that Daniel Ricciardo is a super, super talented driver and Seb will be feeling awful right now because you just want to beat your teammate. That's the number one thing. And I love that radio call to move out of the way and then when Seb found out Daniel was on the same tyres, he said, hard luck and Daniel still got past him. And I don't think... Sebastian let him get past. I think Dan. I think Sebastian realised Daniel was coming, and at that point thought this could end dirtily, messily, end in tears. Um, so Daniel did the right thing. Uh, let's get some more from Facebook. Sarah on Facebook. Hi Sarah. Who is the F1 related person, driver, or team principal you dreaded having to interview the most because they were unpredictable? No question about it. Kimi Raikkonen. I absolutely love Kimi. Um, I would love to interview him all day long. But I would also enter that interview with real dread because you don't know whether you're going to get someone with a smile and a laugh on his face. Um, I actually hosted his return to Formula One when he returned to the Lotus Renault team a couple of seasons ago. And I had dinner with him and he was brilliant, really good company, really chatty. He knew all about the BBC Sky situation at the time. We were talking about that. Interviewed him at the Australian Grand Prix a couple of months later. One word answer. He did not want to talk. That's just the way Kimmy is and that's part of the enigma. Um, on Twitter, at Alex Pettit. Alex, I know you. Hello, mate. Uh, what's your view on the Ferrari situation? Should Domenicali have gone? Yes, because it's a result-driven business, and I feel sorry for him. He's a lovely guy, but it just wasn't happening. Same reason why Martin Whitmarsh had to go from McLaren. Um, and is Mattiacci the right man to replace him? Time will tell. Mattiacci is a Ferrari man, and at Ferrari, they love to appoint their Ferrari-loving, Italian, red-blooded, horsepower guys, um, and he will know the brand inside out. But can he get that car winning again? Can he get those drivers inspired to, to do what they need to do and get everyone pulling in the same direction? Very, very difficult, I would suggest. They won't win the title this year, Ferrari, um, so they need to work really hard to make sure next year it happens. One here from Phil on Facebook. He says, what was your most uh, memorable track? Which one did you like the most? And my favourite car over the years. My favourite car... The black and gold Lotus that uh, Ayrton Senna raced. I was growing up at the time in Norfolk and I fell in love with Formula One in that era. And in terms of my favourite track, it was always Monza. I used to love going to Monza and at some point in the race weekend, I would just break away from what was going on and I would walk to the old banking and I would just have a quiet moment to myself. One here from uh, Twitter at Welsh Dragon DSG with no team orders at Mercedes just yet. 
Do you think they will start to use them coming to the end of the season? Yes, I do. I think that what Lewis is well aware of at the moment is that if he can just turn the screw, just ramp up the pressure on Nico Rosberg a little bit more, beat him psychologically, beat him emotionally, beat him on the track for four or five races, he will then, I'm quite sure, be going to Mercedes and saying, come on, be sensible. I'm your man for the world title. Back me, support me, get all the new parts to me. Um, and that's the way that Formula One works. You know, you have to assert your authority in a team. And when you get that authority, any driver worth his salt uses it to his advantage. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's what Lewis Hamilton tries to do. And I wouldn't be surprised either if Mercedes allowed that to happen as we get towards the end of the season. Because it's all about winning the title. And you back the guy that you think is is got the greatest chance. Having said that, if Nico turns things around at the next Grand Prix, wins four or five on the spin, he'll be the one going to the team saying... Come on, support me. I'm your man. Question here from Kelly on Facebook. She says, which F1 legend would you like to have seen racing? Jim Clark, uh, my hero, uh, went to Hockenheim and worked really hard to fight through the undergrowth into the forest to find Jim Clark's grave. And I stood there for a while and that was incredible. At Dinali on Twitter, what are your thoughts on double points? Do you think it will get dropped closer to the race? I'd love it to get dropped. I think double points is a joke. I think it's embarrassing for the sport. I think it's a gimmick. I don't think it should be there, but I don't think it will be dropped either. Chrissy on Facebook, do you think Ricardo will outshine Vettel this season? Yes, I do. I do. Um, I think the guy's got such a super talent, and he's finally got a car to show that. I think it really could happen. Kenny on Facebook, do you think you would emulate Lewis Hamilton's new haircut? Listen, Kenny, I didn't emulate the earrings. And I will not be emulating the new haircut, but I'd be quite happy to give Lewis any sartorial or fashion advice if he would care to pick up the phone. And finally, at Vicky Garvey on Twitter, am I enjoying the shake-up of the grid with the new engines and will Red Bull catch up in Europe? It's a good question, Dickie. It's a funny old world, isn't it, Formula One? Everyone fights and works so hard to find what they believe to be the ultimate formula to deliver exciting racing. The reality is that if... Everything conspires for you, which is what happened in Bahrain, and you get a safety car at the right time, and you get guys on different tyres, and you get guys who've got enough fuel to race to the end. You will get a brilliant Grand Prix, regardless of the track, regardless of anything else. And then the race that we've only just seen in China, I think the Chinese Grand Prix track is one of the best, but pretty dull race, actually. Um, I think it's time that they stopped working hard to make Formula 1 exciting and just worked hard to make it competitive and then we will get these incredible exciting races. Thank you very much for watching F1 to 1 so far this Formula 1 season and I'll be back ahead of the next Grand Prix with my phone ringing one of the contacts on there and talking about F1. So uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and thanks for catching up with me. See you soon. Bye bye.